Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Ballmer! What? 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 Hold up. Oh, hold up. Wait a minute. Wow. Hmm. Seriously, how is this guy a billionaire? Steve Ballmer is one of the most interesting figures that I've ever come across in the tech industry. What interested me the most about him was the fact that he doesn't fit any stereotype or traditional profile of a tech CEO. He's insanely extroverted, he's not a programmer, and he says whatever is on his mind as passionately as he possibly can without a second thought. Even going as far as saying in an interview in 2013 that he was quote, big, bold, and loud. His meteoric rise is just as fascinating as his personality. Steve Ballmer went from being a manager or essentially Bill Gates' assistant to being the head of the largest software company in the world. After retiring, like any casually super rich billionaire, he bought himself a big sports team. Well, I use the term big there very loosely because the LA Clippers have never been NBA champions in their entire 52 year history. It must be tough to support them. But what do you expect from the other team in LA? I don't know if it's luck, skill, timing, having the right friend, or a combination of all four that is responsible for the success of Steve Ballmer. But what is clear is that he has a unique place in tech history as the man who laughed at the iPhone when it first came out and being the second person in US history to become a billionaire through stock options received as an employee of a corporation. So in our second episode of the man, the meme, the legend series, we will be taking a look at Steve Ballmer. In our first episode, we looked at Craig Federighi. You guys seem to have enjoyed that video given that it is my third most watched video of all time at the time of recording. So today, we are continuing the series with perhaps the most bizarrely energetic and passionate figure in the tech industry, Steve Ballmer. Boma was born in Detroit, Michigan on March 24, 1956. He was a gifted child, having been a National Merit Scholar and also scoring a perfect 800 on the math section of the SAT. This resulted in his admission to Harvard University, where he lived down the hall from Bill Gates. Steve Boma was athletic too. He was the captain of his high school basketball team and was also part of the Harvard football team. He graduated magna cum laude with a Bachelor of Arts in Applied Mathematics and Economics in 1977. After university, Baumer worked as an assistant product manager at Procter & Gamble for two years, but he didn't find the job interesting enough, so he left. After briefly trying to write screenplays in Hollywood, he started attending the Stanford Graduate School of Business for his MBA but dropped out in 1980 to join Microsoft after Bill Gates persuaded him. It was about that time, maybe five years after I got out of Harvard, I get this call from Bill, who says, you want to join me and Paul? It was a two-bit little company they called Microsoft. First, I think, yeah, like I'd like to lose more hair. But, you know, then I started thinking. Baumol was Microsoft's 30th employee and the first business manager hired by Bill Gates. Balmer was offered a salary of $50,000 as well as 5-10% to of the company. In 1985, Balmer became the operating system development head at Microsoft. Although not a programmer himself, he headed the team of developers working on MS-DOS and Windows 1.0. In 1986, one of the earliest viral videos of Steve Balmer was produced, promoting Windows 1.0 in the style of a crazy Eddie commercial. Now we can take this Ferrari and paste it right into Windows right. Now, how much do you think Microsoft Windows is worth? Don't answer. Wait until you see Windows right and Windows Paint and then listen to what else you get at no extra charge. From his early days at Microsoft, he has had a fiery, energetic personality 
so much so that in 1991 in Japan, during a meeting, he was recorded screaming windows with such force that he injured his vocal cords. From February 1992 onwards, he was Executive Vice President of Sales and Support. As the Vice President of Sales, Steve Ballmer was featured on stage during the iconic release of Windows 95. It was the most consumer-friendly operating system Microsoft had ever released. And because of the massive excitement around Windows 95, Steve Ballmer just had to show his excitement in his own unique way. And of course, the marketing of Windows 98 would also feature Steve Ballmer. This time it was in an ad he made with Bill Gates, which was a play on the song What Is Love. By the way, I believe in uh, winners and losers and, and especially the freedom to fail. Who? Who? Him? Who? Him? Who? Him? Him? him, him who? who? Me? What? In 1998, Balma was promoted to President of Microsoft, a title that he held from July 1998 to February 2001, making him the de facto number two in the company to the then chairman and CEO, Bill Gates. On January 13, 2000, Steve Ballmer was officially named the Chief Executive Officer of Microsoft. In just 20 years, Ballmer had gone from being a manager to the head of the world's largest software company. It was a rapid and meteoric rise. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a plan! Now, if this global reinvention is to work, there might be a few competitors that are unfortunately eliminated. <laughs> Steve Ballmer's tenure at Microsoft was on one hand tremendously successful and on the other quite unremarkable. To understand why Steve Ballmer's tenure was such a mixed bag of results, let's first focus on the success of Ballmer's tenure. When Sony Computer Entertainment first announced the PlayStation 2 in 1999, the company had positioned the console as a centerpiece for home entertainment, as it not only would play video games, but also could play audio CDs and video DVDs. Microsoft, whose business had been primarily in supporting the personal computer business, saw the PlayStation 2 as a threat to the personal computer. So a plan was made within Microsoft to create a gaming console that essentially ran Windows but was optimized for gaming. While the original Xbox had modest sales, Microsoft took a large financial loss to support it. However, its performance was sufficient to convince the company to continue to produce the line, which today generates billions of dollars in revenue. During his 14 years in charge, he oversaw the release of Windows XP, Xbox 360, Windows 7, Microsoft Surface, Office 365, and much, much more. His greatest achievement, however, was moving Microsoft's business from PC first to enterprise. He understood that the PC was not going to be dominant forever. In 2010, a few years before he left, he launched Microsoft Azure, a cloud computing platform that is currently the second biggest cloud computing platform after Amazon's AWS. But Steve Ballmer's successes were massively overshadowed by his failures. Microsoft had a massive war chest and opportunities in mobile, search, and social, but missed all of it. The analytical, business-like, and data-driven style of Ballmer seemed to excel more at management, but less at creativity. One thing most people don't know is the fact that Microsoft started developing tablets and smartphones before Apple. The Windows tablet PC was first unveiled at Comdex 2001, with Bill Gates famously saying, it would outsell PCs within the next five years, something that never ended up happening. The iPad and iPhone would go on to set the standard while Microsoft devices failed to get any traction. To add to Microsoft's hardware failures was the Zoom. I stood in front of a case of iPods and I bought a Zoom. <laughs> What's a Zoom? Yep, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the main issue with the Zoom was that it was way too late. It was released at a time when the iPod had already been dominant, while it had a neat user interface and was of decent quality. 
it wasn't better than the iPod to the extent that it could convince iPod owners to switch to it. Then there was the Windows Vista disaster. Windows Vista from the day of its launch had pretty steep hardware requirements in order to run it. It was a massively bloated operating system. So bloated that even on the latest and greatest hardware 2007, it still ran painfully slow. Overall it felt very rushed and buggy. Under Balmer's tenure, Microsoft also lost its massive dominance over the web browser market to Google Chrome. Then there was the acquisition of Skype for $8.5 billion. $8.5 billion, which put quite simply, was just wasted. Nobody uses Skype today. If Microsoft had played its cards right, we all wouldn't know what Zoom is today. Balmer repeatedly killed products that went on to be huge businesses for other companies. Essentially put, he was the anti-Steve Jobs. What he possessed in business acumen, he completely lacked in vision. His complete lack of vision is evident in how he reacted to the release of the iPhone. Five hundred dollars, fully subsidized with a plan. I said that is the most expensive phone in the world, and it doesn't appeal to business customers because it doesn't have a keyboard, which makes it not a very good email machine. The iPhone would go on to be one of the most popular consumer products of all time. Bill Gates famously wrote a memo heralding the internet as the future, which turned out to be exactly right. Bulma wrote zero such memos. Instead, he called the iPhone a toy and open source a cancer. Those turned out to be totally wrong. Microsoft missed literally every major industry trend while Bulma was CEO, with the partial exception of cloud to which they were late but not too late. The head of the cloud division then was Satya Nadella, the current CEO. Bomber emphasized competition, aggression and visibility at the cost of teamwork, collaboration and results. As a result, Microsoft became a place where people put their own careers ahead of the good of the company and its users. People who yelled got promoted for leadership. As a result, Microsoft employees hated Steve Bomber's leadership with Glassdoor reporting that he only had a 47% approval rating from Microsoft employees. In comparison, Meta's Mark Zuckerberg had a 99% approval rating. The lack of vision and the bad culture he had created simply stopped Microsoft from innovating during his entire 14-year reign. Steve Ballmer would later leave Microsoft in 2014, capping off a 14-year tenure that had tremendous financial success had virtually no innovations to speak of. In 2001, Microsoft's market cap was $300 billion. When he left in 2014, it was $300 billion. It is best summed up by an article from Bloomberg saying, even though Microsoft has almost tripled revenue and more than tripled profits on his watch, its share price has been immovable. In his farewell speech, a teary Steve Ballmer called Microsoft the greatest company in the world and thanked its employees. You work for the greatest company in the world. Soak it in. And I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. He signed off just as he had signed in, as energetic as ever. You've made this the time of my, my life. Oh,